What's up, everybody? Welcome to On Tap. I'm Kevin, your host, and uh, you can join me every week for just enough, but not too much, of the good stuff. And last week, you actually couldn't join me for any good stuff. You had to join my buddy, Adam, and uh, I love Adam. He... <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't say the name of the show right. God bless that man. But uh, I love what he shared with us about digging into relationships with people in our lives, and so I appreciate him covering for me as I was out. Um, but this week, you know, I, I this is about the time when I mentioned Guy Fieri, and I, I said I wouldn't say his name. I said his name anyway. But we're going to give Guy Fieri a break this week, and we're actually going to give the whole format a break because I just want to talk to you guys about something that's been on my mind and it's been on my heart as we get into this weekend, which is Memorial Day weekend. And like you, I'm gonna enjoy a day off on Monday from work. But, um, but I started thinking about this, you know, how, how often this holiday rolls around. And I don't think a bit about why. Maybe you do. Um, maybe it's hitting closer to home for you because you have served and you're currently active or you've got family who are currently active or who have given their lives in the, in the field of battle. And so, uh, I just want to do something a little bit different today, and I just want to share from my own life, and, uh, and maybe you can, you can find uh, some connection in it. So, like a lot of you out there, I, uh, I was in the younger years of my life uh, when 9-11 happened, um, and then fast forward into 2003 when uh, the U.S. Uh, invaded into the Middle East. Um, I, I watched all that on TV, and like a lot of you did. Um, we watched the shock and awe. We saw it. And, uh, and at that time, I was just getting into college, and I really didn't know what I was doing with my life. I didn't know where things were going. I didn't know even what was going to happen in the future. I didn't know if we were on the edge of a like, world war. I, I had no idea. And it was really easy at that time to watch it on TV and to watch friends leave and go serve and, and to kind of armchair quarterback the whole thing, you know, to have opinions. Are there WMDs there? Are we going to catch Osama? Like, what, are, what is this all going to lead to? And, and we had a lot of people fighting back and forth on whether or not we should do the things that we were doing or not. And, and a lot of that was generalized towards, towards, like, the military. And it was easier to have opinions about it and to fire off thoughts um, until men and women started coming home. And I had some friends, some people that I got to cross paths with over the years. And I got to talk to them about their time over in the Middle East. And, uh, and I'll tell you, uh, the conversation changes. It's a lot different to sit down with someone face to face. Uh, and after they share that they've served, how many tours they did, what they, what they had to encounter. And all of a sudden, your ability to go, well, yeah, what about this? Or, well, yeah, what about that? Or, or was it there? Or, or get into the politics of it. None of that stuff mattered. Because when you sit across the table from someone who has looked death in the face on a daily basis, who has watched their friends and their, their mates give their lives, it's sobering. And so what I resolved after that time in my life was that I wasn't going to have easy, quick opinions about any of it. I wasn't necessarily against the war. I wasn't really necessarily for it. I didn't know what to think. I was confused. But I knew what I wasn't going to be confused about. And that's this one thing. I decided at that point that I was going to have a, like a posture or a stance of gratitude. Because what I started to realize is that I will never understand what these people had to face on a daily basis. I will never be able to comprehend it. And now as they come back and they're rebuilding, I'll never be able to understand that. So the most I can do, and yet the least I can do, the only thing to do is to be grateful. Not to be grateful for the outcome of a conflict, but to be grateful for an individual taking an oath making a promise to give everything to protect freedom for people they would never meet. And that's a beautiful thing. And so as I went around in life and following years around town and seeing people, whether I would see someone in uniform, would see a young recruit, you know, someone who's real fresh and, and uh, ready to go into it. It could be an ROTC person. It could be someone with a hat, someone with a t-shirt. If I get any sense that anybody has been in and around the military, I make it a point to say, 
Thank you for your service. I could be in Home Depot walking past someone in the Lumber Island and see an old guy with a Vietnam hat and, uh, and you just look at him and you know, and I'm just, thank you for your service. Because that is all these people need to hear from you and I, from civilians who haven't had to face these kind of challenges, is thank you. And so this Memorial Day, as we get into you know, having that extra day off and grilling out and chilling and playing bags, not cornhole, right? And, and grabbing a drink. I hope that as we fill the glass this weekend, as we gather with family and neighbors and enjoy the fresh air, enjoy the freedom, I hope we remember that as we fill this glass to raise that little toast in gratitude, whether anyone's there or not, Maybe it's just in your own heart and mind. You go, thank you. Thank you for your service. And so to all you who gave it all, we know all gave some and some gave all, and that's why we celebrate the Memorial Weekend. To anyone who served, who's currently active, we raise a glass for you. Thank you.